Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of the request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, client wanted a man to cook his food, but he did not know that a woman always cooked his food. The second story, boss is upset and about to fall into hysterics. I have to give my work to other people in the warehouse. The third story, as soon as my last paycheck is cleared, all these files will go to the trash. On to the first story. Only want men to make your meal? Fine by me. I worked as a cook and carry out for an Italian restaurant for several years. Normally I would work in the kitchen during the week and carry out on the weekends. My forte was cook. I was fast, detail oriented and prided myself on making the perfect dish. In the 5 plus years I worked there I was the only female ever in the kitchen. On Tuesdays I was always in the kitchen and another worker Eric worked carry out. Every Tuesday a customer would come in and order the same thing. The order was very specific and went against how meals are typically prepared. Things like they only wanted two meatballs instead of the standard three. The meatballs must be separate from the spaghetti in an aluminum dish, not a styrofoam cup, a small scoop of sauce on the meatballs, etc. The meal was so specific I knew it by heart and always made it. The cheapskate owner of the restaurant would have been peeved if he knew how much styrofoam and aluminum tins I had to use to make the order by splitting all the food out, but I didn't mind. Well, one day Eric decided to switch to serving in the main dining room to make more money. The first Tuesday he switched the managers didn't have anyone for carry out so they asked me to cover. As I was working that night in carry out an old man in a black bowler hat and tan trench coat comes into the lobby. I greet him and am about to take his order when he states, are there any men working today? Where is Eric? I was confused, but went and fetched Eric and Eric took his order. I asked Eric if he was related and he said no, he just feels women are incompetent and can't make his order right. I was fuming. When the order was ready I picked it up and realized it was the specific order that comes in every Tuesday. This old man must have assumed only men work in the kitchen. Little did he know he had just come face to face with a 5 foot 100 pound female that had perfectly made his order every Tuesday for years. I handed him his order without a word. I was so angry by his sexism that I didn't want to speak and say something that would make me lose my job. I regret not saying anything to this day. He inspected his order and rolled his eyes when he spied the meatballs in styrofoam instead of an aluminum dish, but left without a word. After that I decided if he wanted men to handle his stupid order then I'll go with it. I got approval from the manager to proceed with my plan and male coworkers jumped in to help. I asked Eric to not help him anymore since he was familiar with the old man's order. Besides, he needed to focus on serving anyways. Only other men took his order. I asked the male cooks to make his meal. I didn't tell the special instructions. No more special treatment with separate tins. He got the standard spaghetti and meatballs like everyone else. It would be what the male cheapskate owner would want, after all. And no special discount codes that would credit him 50 cents for one less meatball. Only Eric and I knew the discount codes during that shift anyways. Well, every week his order was, according to him, wrong. He started to demand the order be remade per his requirements. He would be denied his requests, citing the cheapskate owner was cracking down on product waste. He got even more upset when he discovered he wasn't getting the discount codes anymore. After several Tuesdays of this charade, he finally asked to speak to a manager to voice his dissatisfaction. He asked, where's the man that was making my meal? And the manager responded, oh, she quit. Looking back, I should have instead popped up around the corner and said something like, I am no man, a la Lord of the Rings or something but that was the best response we thought of at the time. The manager just said he scoffed and took his food and left. He quit coming a couple of weeks later. Never heard from him again. Should have been more respectful to the female cook. Non-traditional sexism where women should not be in the kitchen. Huh, this dude is weird. Probably his mindset. Women belong in the kitchen, but they're not busy cooking my food. So weird when people think of the stereotypical family chef, it's always the wife, but the stereotypical chef is always the man. As if women can't even succeed in the role defined by the sexism assigned to them in these old school views, I think. Personally, I'm too lazy and busy to care about who does what in a restaurant, gender, race, etc. I don't care who makes it. I care what it tastes like. If you're an excellent and competent cook, I'll be back again. I just care that the food is good and the service is at least decent. I don't know why people are so petty about anything. If I were the OP, I'd sit up front, letting him know I was the cook while the men brought his order, and then went back to the kitchen and continued cooking. The best response would have been to introduce you and explain that you've been cooking his meals for the past couple of years. That is until a few weeks ago when he added an additional request that he wanted a man to do it. The second story is, 
Gave my work to a coworker. Got paid to play solitaire for half a day. Anyway, a previous job that I worked as a cycle counter at an old factory, which went out of business two years after this story happened. My direct supervisor was unpredictable. He would throw temper tantrums if any of his employees didn't listen to him. And other times, I was pretty sure that he had no idea how to do the job that he was assigned. He even went as far as to give another one of the cycle counters his password so that they could approve their own counts. Back on track, there were a few of the stockroom clerks. Each assembly line had its own stockroom and one or two people to manage it, which the line workers would bill and check out parts from, who would pretend that they didn't have any work so that they could spend all day doing personal things. Instead of checking their work to make sure that was true, like a supervisor should have, he approached me. Here's how the conversation happened. Approximately, of course, since this was almost 10 years ago. Supervisor. Stockroom clerks 1 and 2 don't have any work to do. Me. Yeah, and what do you want me to do about it? Supervisor. I'm wondering if you can give them the rest of your accounts for today. Me. They're not trained to do it, and if I give my work away, I won't have any for the rest of the day. Though I wouldn't mind going home early. I rode in with someone else who won't leave until 3. He sighed and left my office. I went out and did the actual counting for the afternoon, and there's quite a bit of work to do once I was back at the computer, including checking the counts against what's supposed to be there, and if the count is lower, look at its history to make sure the part doesn't have an alternative location, or an incomplete checkout. I didn't make it back to my office before I was stopped by the stockroom clerks just outside of my office, who I got along with and were good at their jobs. Coworker. Supervisor is upset and on the verge of throwing a temper tantrum like he does. You should give the other stockroom people your work. So after I talked with him about it for a bit, I went back up to my office, called my staffing firm to clear it with them first. They okayed the order so I went down and met supervisor at the desk of the other two stockroom clerks and watched them start to blindly enter the counts into the computer. I sighed and went up to my office and played solitaire for the rest of the day. My supervisor walked by on a few instances and didn't say a word. The fallout was a bit boring. There was a good backlog of corrections to deal with, which mostly I had to, but a few weeks later at the daily safety meeting, one of the head managers had stopped by to head it off. He discussed a few bullet points they added to the briefing. One of them was along the lines of, Manager, and don't assign work to employees who aren't trained for it, while staring directly at supervisor. Reprimands and write-ups were done in private between the parties involved, so I'm sure he was punished for it. He was in a very bad mood for the whole week after the actual situation, so I think he will not repeat his mistakes again. Edit. I work in IT currently, so there's up times and down times. In the case of my post though, the folks who were slacking actually weren't doing their jobs, at least not very well. Most of the incomplete checkouts on parts were in their stock rooms, which created more work for me, as the computer would say something like 36 of a part was supposed to be there, but only 24 was there physically. I'd have to go on the part number history, I'd likely find that 12 were taken out on a job, but the checkout process wasn't completed, so I'd have to complete it for them. Something that the supervisor is supposed to check up on, and if they actually are done with their work, just let them have their downtime. Working in warehouses is so much fun when you know what you're doing and you have leeway. I've been doing cycle counting for 10 years, and have worked most positions, so I need a weekend job just for that. But never do what the person wants just because they will throw a tantrum if you don't do it. It doesn't matter if that person is 50 years old or 50 months old. That your boss is cranky is his problem. He's at work, not in kindergarten, and he has to perform certain tasks. In places where the company pays for training time, they tailor the training of each employee to the job they're assigned to do when they're hired. If they were to train every employee for every job, that would be a lot of extra cost, but that's not your concern. The last story is, this is the priority, a bit of MC against my awful boss. Update. I'm writing this on my lunch break, where I thought for sure I wouldn't have anything to report to you guys until the end of the day, but this morning was interesting to say the least. First of all, I'll reveal a bit more information about where I work, because the context is needed to fully explain. I do the marketing and communications for a small school. Stacy, my boss, is the principal. The work I mentioned in my previous post where I was asked to do things I was nowhere near qualified for was to teach. Very often I would be asked to substitute teach, despite not having the proper qualifications such as licenses or a degree in the subject matter. At one point I had to cover teaching a class of elementary schoolers with no lesson plan for an entire week because their teacher quit on the spot. Well today, my last day, I woke up to a number of texts sent at 5 a.m. from my boss asking me to cover again and substitute teach. Absolutely effing not. Not on my last day will I be doing something completely out of lines with my work and that quite frankly makes me incredibly uncomfortable. I said no, she said do it anyways. 
No, I refused to sub today, so I decided to explain a few things to Stacy. Project A still isn't finished. It wasn't going to be finished by the time I left regardless of what I did today because it was so far behind. Again, all because she took a week and a half to respond to an email approving the design. My original plan today was to do as much work on Project A as possible, but if I was being asked to substitute teach, instead it looks like that wouldn't be happening. So now instead of being mostly done, Project A would only be a little more than halfway complete when I left. Stacy was not happy hearing all this, but somehow now she was miraculously able to find an actual substitute teacher. Now for a little additional MC. Now that Stacy knew Project A wasn't complete, she reiterated to me that it was the top priority, and she wanted me to do only work for Project A today, nothing else. So I'll be doing absolutely nothing else. I was going to create a file in Google Drive with all my photographs, designs, and other media and give them access. I was going to show one of my coworkers how to log in to do basic edits to our website. I was going to create an Excel sheet with all the passwords for our various social media accounts, softwares, and other third-party apps. I considered these all basic things to do when leaving a workplace, but now it looks like I'm not allowed to do those. None of these items would have taken me more than 10 minutes, but will wind up taking the school hours if not days to reconcile. At 3.15 p.m. exactly, I'll be out of here, and then I'm done with them. I'm so excited to leave I've already started packing up my belongings, and I'm being incredibly meticulous and petty about it. All the pens, staples, and binder clips I bought are going home with me, even if they're in use. I'm taking my plug-in air freshener out of the bathroom. Even the temporary wallpaper I put up is coming down. I can't wait until a few weeks from now when they call looking for access to the pictures I took. Once my last paycheck clears, all those files are going in the trash. I won't even offer them a chance to get them back by paying me a ridiculous consulting fee. As far as I'm concerned, that's their problem, not mine. Edit. You told me beware of deleting stuff you created in the context of your job. It might legally belong to them. I've doubled and triple checked this. According to my contract, the only rights they have to media I've created are over items that I've already distributed or given them access to. All my work is on my personal laptop, so as long as I'm only deleting my files and not any they have stored on their servers, I'm in the clear. Not that they would know any of this anyways. They're not particularly well versed in labor and employment laws considering how many they break. Just in case, check your contract before deleting files. I'm a designer, and most of my contracts state that the files and the work I do for the company belong to them. I think it would be great to charge them an hourly rate that's four times your normal rate, and then make sure that each 10 minute task takes at least one hour. And if they turn you down, well you offered and they said no. That way you get to enjoy a delicious MC, and also enjoy the view from a moral high ground. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe.